glass. Thanks, Felicia, and welcome everybody to the week of jewelry making. This is actually our last day of week of jewelry making, um, but we've had several different classes on lots of different topics with several different instructors. So if this gives you a taste for something and you really wanna dig further into your jewelry making, then please go back to our YouTube channel with our Michaels YouTube and check out all of the other classes that have happened so far this week and even classes before that. We have some jewelry classes that happen once a week um, with a really great instructor named Danielle Wick. So you're always welcome to join her classes too. This one is meant to be for very beginners. So if any of you have any extra seed bead skills, um, be patient because this is meant to be for super, super beginners. I'd love to know in the chat, those of you who are here with me, if you're gonna be working along or if you're just watching for now and plan to watch the video again later to create your own pieces. So let me know if you're going to watch or if you're going to play, and also let me know if you are a true beginner and if you don't have any seed bead skills, crimping skills, making the clasps and things for jewelry, let me know that so that I can kind of make sure that I'm answering any questions and kind of teaching at our true beginner level. So this is kind of what we're working on today. This is my tower of <laughs> seed bead jewelry that is falling off. So it looks like a lot of you are going to be trying to work along with me, which is fun. But I'm going to kind of take you through some of these different things. All the techniques I'm going to teach you today are going to show you how to create beautiful jewelry that will have some metal clasped so that they'll be easy for you to take on and off. Um, I'm going to show you how to add some extra accentuation pieces, embellishments. But you can take any of the skills that we learned today and keep going with them and start making more complicated pieces of jewelry. So instead of just one bracelet, you can start weaving some together. You can start adding different charms. You can make necklaces instead of bracelets. So there's lots to do with the skills that you're going to learn in this very beginner course today. And let me switch over to my other camera and show you some of the materials that I'm going to be working with. So a lot of you said that you're going to be working along, and I hope that you have something that looks similar to this. So I feel like this is a really good bang for your buck, especially for the project that we're doing today, because this tiny little beginner kit findings for jewelry has some wire in it. It has some crimp beads. It has two different styles of clasps the ones that are round and the ones that are more like the lobster clasp. And you have several sizes of jump rings. So this tiny little package you can find in the jewelry section. It's super um, awesome because all of your findings are in the same kind of metal. So I chose a rose gold, but there's gold, there's silver, there's lots of different choices. So I like this one for what we're gonna do. Because we're going to be using the wire, I'm going to be showing you how to use the crimp beads and showing you how to attach some of those clasps. But like I said, they also come in a different kind of gold. They come in a silver. They come in some oxidized metal, kind of like a blackish color. So use whatever color metal you want. Um, I also suggested in the shopping list for today some beads. These ones look like hearts. So again, these come in lots of different colors. These are a gold. There is a rose gold. There's um, also a silver. You can also find some of those same beads. They're in the strung bead section. These ones are more like Celtic knots, if you can see that. So um, they have a little bit more of a design on each one of those hearts. I love those and I think they're really pretty. And so just to kind of show you some of the things I was showing you before, let me move this, have a little show and tell. So here's one of the necklaces that I made and I use those rose gold um, heart shaped beads. And then I just connected this with, with our lobster clasp. And you're gonna be able to learn how to do these crimp beads and how to work with that wire in order to give you a really polished finish. So that's turned into a necklace. You can also play around with jump rings and do some different things with those. So let me find another example to show you. Here's one, like I was showing you when I was holding it up at the beginning, where I took three or four different pieces that I put together and just attached them all with the jump ring together so that they're kind of interwoven into one bracelet. But it's really the exact same thing we're going to do 
in a very different form. So there's lots of variations to the skill set that we're going to learn today. So the first thing that I'm going to ask you to do is to find your findings kit. And then you also are going to need to find a crimper, um, crimping tool. So there's a bead landing crimp tool. There's also a bead along crimp tool. Either of those are going to be great for you today. And then you're also going to want some sort of beads. So let's talk a second about seed beads. So seed beads come in lots of different sizes. And the size that I recommended for our class today has a six on it. So six slash zero. And you'll notice that these are pretty large. The holes inside the bead are large, so you can get them through pretty easily, especially if your eyeballs are <laughs> struggling with these tiny, tiny seed beads. That is a common problem. So the six is a really good size for us, but just to kind of show you a comparison, this is what a 12 looks like. So the difference between a six right here on my right and a 12, which is this turquoise, is super different. So it's gonna take a different kind of skill set and a different kind of patience to work with the 12s. So we are not going to be working with those today because we're beginners. But I do wanna show you that still at Michael's, um, at the ends of the aisles of your jewelry, a lot of times you're gonna see these little sets that are on sale and on clearance. This was kind of like a one-time shot where they bought a bunch of these and there are still some left in the store, but I love this little three pack. So I don't think you can still order these online, but your store might still have them. And sometimes there's three different sizes. Sometimes they're all sixes. Sometimes there's 10, but I love this little sampler set that Bead Landing has. So if you ever see these, these are great for you to buy. And just as a difference too, there's also something called a two when it comes to seed beads. And let me just so show you how dramatically different these are too. So those are huge compared to even the six. So work with what you feel like you're comfortable working with. I chose sixes because I think that they're gonna be good for us all to work with as beginners. But if you start getting more confident and wanna use something smaller, or if you wanna mix some of the sizes together, all of those are good options. So let me show you a few more examples. Here's one that I just took a simple color and just added that one rose gold heart in here and have those rose gold clasps. Sometimes with the clasp, I like to offer many different jump rings so that if you don't know the size of the wrist of the person you're making for, it's sometimes nice to have options and to be able to make it larger or smaller. Here's another one where I use the hearts that have more of kind of like the Celtic pattern on them. And then here's one where I did a little bit more work with some jump rings. So what I did was I put these beads in here with the heart. And then I added a couple more jump rings kind of in the middle of the bracelet just to have some extra interest and some extra fun in the bracelet. So the tray that I'm using is a bead landing tray. It's a multi-strand bead design board. Um, I make a lot of bracelets, so I like this. But if you're just starting, you really don't need this yet. You can always use a paper plate to kind of keep track of all your beads. Or sometimes I find some sort of little wooden tray or something like that that I can kind of keep my beads in so that they're not spilling all over my table. So find whatever you need in order to get started with that. And one of the colors I had suggested for today is this topaz mix, which has all these really cool, funky peaches, golds, rose golds, and things like that in it. So these are the beads we're gonna start with. There are also different charms you can find. So if you ever wanna add any different charms than the ones that we're using, you're always welcome to do that as well. So I'm gonna pour some of my beads and I'm going to get started with the wire and show you the process of using the group beads. And I love that this is already a mix. I don't have to think too hard about making a pattern. It's already just kind of um, mixed up for me. So in my bead landing little findings kit, I have this wire in the back. So here's what the packet looks like. It's called a findings kit and it has wire, crimp beads, clasps, and jump rings. So it's got a lot of things in it. I'm gonna go ahead and take out my wire and if you don't know how long your wrist is, um, I usually make my bracelets about eight inches um, because I know that those fit well on my wrist.
but you can always kind of um, take something and wrap it around your wrist and then pull it out and measure it if you're not sure. And when you're cutting your wire, you're going to want to use your wire cutters, which are in that nice set of tools I had suggested that you had for this class. So you do have a wire cutter in your nice set of tools. And I'm just going to untangle this wire a bit. And I'm going to pull more than what I need so that I have a little bit extra to go wrap over and do a little bit of crimping. And you can wrap the wire around your wrist if you'd like and have a couple inches more than you need before you go ahead and cut that off using your wire cutter. There we go. So now I have more than enough wire, way more than eight inches. And what we're gonna do is we're going to attach one of these clasps and we're going to use these crimp beads. So these are tiny, so you probably do want somewhere to put these. They sometimes have these little boxes to kind of keep everything in one place. Or again, if you have some sort of tray or something to kind of keep track of these so that you don't lose them as you open all these little baggies. So here are some of the clasps. There we go. And these ones are nice because they have both sides. They have the side where it opens and they have the other side that's kind of like a little tab that you can um, attach a jump ring to so that you know where you're kind of going towards. And then we also have in the next set up these clasps that are more like lobsters. And they also in the packet have a nice thing to grab onto so that you don't have to grab just onto the jump ring. So these are pretty nice to work with also. So I'm gonna use this one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread it through. So I'm threading the clasp through my wire and I'm gonna be bending my wire over. And then I'm going to be putting one of these um, crimp beads to kind of hold this. So I'm making a loop and I'm gonna put a crimp bead right where my thumb is right here in order to keep that secured. So before I actually do that, I'm gonna put the crimp bead first. So let me get a teeny tiny crimp bead out of my packet. There we go. So I'm gonna string that onto my wire first. And of course, all of this is pretty delicate and small, so take your time, I know it takes patience. Then I'm gonna fold this clasp over fold the wire over and I'm going to thread that wire back through that exact same crimp bead. So what it's doing is the crimp bead is kind of pulling both of the ends of that loop together in order to secure it. So it's fine that I have some extra of that wire dangling down here. And then there's a three step process to making a crimp bead crimped. Now, a lot of people don't know how to use crimp beads properly and just take a plier and smash it. And that is one way to do it. But I don't recommend it because it's going to damage the wire and it's going to be more easily easy for it to break off. So here's the three steps for your crimp beads. They're on your pliers, on your crimp tool. There are three different teeth. So the first set of teeth if I close it, you might be able to see it. Looks like a circle. And the second one looks like a little macaroni. I don't know if you can see that or not. But the first one, what it's gonna do is I'm gonna put the, the bead, the crimp bead into that first one. And it's gonna round out my bead, make it a little more oval shaped. And then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna take that oval shape and I'm gonna put it into the macaroni step. And the macaroni step is gonna pinch down in the middle of the oval. And it's going to put the two different wires into kind of two different tubes, if that makes any sense. So the difference between what we're doing with the proper tools and what you might do with the plier is if you just have pliers and you just smash down on the crimp bead, then you're kind of just hoping that you caught both of those wires and you're just kind of mashing everything together. And that mashing together might actually kind of deteriorate the wire and get it to be less strong. So by doing it this way, we are keeping each one of these wires kind of separate from each other. 
to keep the integrity of the wire. So I keep my crimp bead and it's fine to have a little bit of leeway so that you can kind of have some movement, but I'm gonna go in the first set of teeth and I'm just gonna go on the crimp bead and press down with those teeth. And what it's doing is it's just widening the oval. And then I'm gonna go down and notice how I'm holding the two wires, kind of keeping them separate from each other. And then I'm gonna go in with the second set and that second set is kind of separating the two pieces using that little macaroni. So notice how I'm in the second set of my pliers. I'm not in the first set anymore. And that's breaking them into two different spaces. And then I'm gonna go back to the first one and notice how I'm kind of twisting or tilting my piece um, towards me. I'm gonna go back to the first notch and I am going to press one more time and that's going to give me a nice clean squeeze around that. So the three steps for your crimp bead are for you to take a crimp bead, put it through the wire, and then use the first notch in order to make the oval wider. Then you're gonna take that oval and put it in the macaroni stitch to kind of bend those two sides around. And those two sides of the macaroni are where it's grabbing each one of those two wires. And then you put it back into the first notch and kind of twist it on the side rather than at the beginning um, in the same direction. And that's pushing those and kind of moving those towards each other to give you a really nice finish. So there's a couple of questions in the chat that I'm gonna ask, um, that I'm gonna take a second and answer. So one of them is asking about wire protectors. And yeah, I think that that's a great, um, the wire protectors are good for a next step. For a beginner just kind of learning how to crimp, I think this is a good style. You can also use a crimp tube. So I used a crimp bead, um, but there are tubes that are longer and they work a lot better um, or they work very similarly. Um, so it's not like one is better than the other. It just depends on the look. If you just want a tiny little bead or if you want a longer um, tube, the tube kind of adds to some of the design also. All right. Yes, so people using wire protectors are saying that they really like the way it looks too. So I'm gonna leave this extra bit of wire for now, but that is something that I can go back later on and trim down, but I am gonna try and keep it um, for now and I should be able to hide it in beads and it won't be sticking out or poking anyone. So now it's time for me to go ahead and start stringing the beads. And what's nice about wire when it comes to seed beads is that this wire does have some sturdiness to it. So it's much easier to string these beads with wire than it is to string them with something kind of like an elastic cording that's gonna do a lot of moving. So I'm not trying hard to make a pattern. I'm trying to be random and trying to let the beads kind of fall where they may. And you might notice that with my left hand, I'm kind of squeezing between my fingers and I'm kind of like rotating the beads around with my fingers so that I can always get that opening and be able to thread it a little bit easier. So my left hand's doing a little bit of work kind of prepping the beads for me to be able to send the wire through. And then my right hand is just kind of fishing for those beads and putting them onto my wire and sending them down. If you want to start adding any um, extra pieces, so if you have some of these hearts that you wanna add in, or if you have some of the there's some cute little turtles I have, just all kinds of things that you can add to it if you want to. And you'll notice right here, my little wire is kind of sticking out. So I am gonna tuck the beads through that, kind of double strand it right there so that that's not tucking out anymore. So there's a question also about, did you say what size strand count the wire is? And that is a really good question because I bought this in a kit and the wire came in this kit it doesn't actually tell me what size the wire is, but it's a very thin wire. Um, so I don't know what I would compare it to size-wise, but it's definitely not thick. It's going to be very thin. So no, I don't have that size because it did come in this pack and it didn't say on the pack what size it was, but this is very thin, very pliable, very easy to work with. And what's nice about that kit is that the colors 
are automatically going to um, match up to all your metals. So should the crimp bead be tight on the wire or does it still slide around? It shouldn't slide around because the point of the crimp bead is to kind of um, keep things from sliding around. It's to keep that place and to hold that, that end, that closure on for you. So Jan in the chat says that she's using a 28 gauge wire and I think that that's a great idea. And the better your wire too, the more you're gonna wanna protect it by crimping your beads properly because you don't want to have strands that overlap each other and kind of wear down the wire. You want those strands to be protected in the crimp bead or in the um, crimp tube. Yeah, there are all kinds of different spools you can grab. And you'll start finding out once you've moved a little bit further past beginner, like what tools definitely work for you. But I just really like this pack, how it, everything we need comes in that one little pack. I think that's a great deal for someone who's especially just starting out. And then once you say, mm, maybe these crimp beads are too tiny for my eyes, you can move up to a different size, larger size crimp bead, or maybe you're ready for a smaller size seed bead than the sixes you can upgrade that way too. So if you want to be adding any kind of jewels, you kind of want to pay attention to how big you're making it. I told you before that my wrists, I usually make something that's eight inches. So if you don't have a bead board, that's okay. You can lay down a ruler and you can check out how long it's getting. Um, but on my bead board, there's a zero right here. And going to the left, here's four inches. And going to the right, here's four more inches. So if I were trying to make eight inches, I need to fill up this inspire, entire space from four to four. And then I would know that the center is right here at the zero. So I am right at my center. And if I want to add something to the center, I should. So I'm going to go ahead and take these off and add one of these beautiful hearts. And then I can keep going and move towards the next size. Next side. And I'm just going to keep stringing. And I'm going to keep letting my left hand kind of move the beads around in between my thumb and my middle finger. And that's going to help me find each one of those openings. And if you're struggling with these sixes, imagine what a 12, <laughs> what a 12 feels like to try and manage. So that takes a lot of patience and a lot of uh, a lot of patience. So there is a question in the chat about the same technique with stretch magic. And I will very much, I love the kind of stretch cords. So I will definitely cover that and show you how to do some of these same things, but with stretch cord instead of with wire. Um, and then you can kind of decide where your jewelry making adventure takes you if you wanna make stretch bracelets or if you wanna make these nice um, elegant closures. Lots of people like lots of different kinds of jewelry. So it's nice to have a variety of options. And those of you who are making along, I would love to see what you're up to and see how it's going. Jan sent me a picture of her um, wire on the spool. And if you wanna send a picture, you can either send a picture here in the chat or you can always send us um, picture on Instagram and tag us at Learn with Michaels. Learn with Michaels is our Instagram channel where we talk about all of the classes, not just my classes, but lots of different kinds of classes for lots of different kinds of crafts. So there's always something new going on over there if you want to check that out. And I am getting pretty close to being finished. So I have about one more inch left of beads. And then I'm going to use a very similar process to what we started with, with the crimp bead, in order to finish this off. And then we'll have our very first beginner bracelet done. And you can show all your friends, and they'll be very jealous. And then you can make them some, so they're less jealous. <laughs> I am at a good place to stop. And hopefully you're pretty close too. So even if you're in the middle, you might wanna kind of look up and kind of watch this part. So with the clasp I chose, there's an ending piece that's kind of like a little um, flat slab. And 
that's what's going to help me finish this off. So like I did last time, I'm gonna take one tiny crimp bead and I'm gonna string that on first. Put these in this little corner down here. And I'm just stringing this tiny little crimp bead on the wire towards my beads. And then I'm going to loop it through the hole on that flat piece and I'm going to double over the wire and I'm going to go back through the crimp bead and notice how I'm going through the crimp bead towards the beads on my bracelet. There we go. And you can leave some room we can kind of still move this around to put it in the place we want it to once I get it threaded. There we go. And so now that I kind of have this threaded through that crimp bead, I probably want to move the crimp bead a little closer to these. So I'm kind of moving it in that direction and pulling on the wire. You also don't need the wire to be um, perfectly touching the beads. You do want to leave a little bit of wiggle room so that it bends and it kind of moves. And when you have it kind of where you want it to be, then we're going to use our crimp tool again. So I'm going to keep the two wires lined up so that they're not crossing each other. And I'm going to use my crimp tool. There's three steps to the crimp tool. So step one is in the first set of teeth and we are just making that crimp bead rounder and kind of pressing it down a little bit. So it's in the first set of teeth. And then you can see that I've kind of separated it. Let me see if I can get that. So see how my two wires are still pretty separate from each other. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take the second set of teeth and I'm going to go Put a little divot down the middle and kind of make those go towards the sides to kind of round that and kind of bend those around each of those two wires. And then my crimp bead goes back into the front set of teeth. And those two little tubes that you've just kind of created will kind of smush together in order to create a nice crimp. I'm just going to make sure I grab those. Get a nice crimp on that. There we go. All right, now you can, um, this wire is very, very pliable. So you can go ahead and thread this through a couple of beads and then you can kind of cut down your excess. Or you can cut it all the way close to where that site is. That's kind of your preference. So I'm pulling it all the way through here and then I'm going to take my wire cutters and I'm going to cut off any excess. And if that pokes out um, differently and you want to cut it down more, you can. But right now, all of that scratchy wire is hidden in there and it's not poking out and it's not doing anything. So at the very beginning too, when you have that excess, if you have any excess that's sticking out that might potentially poke at someone, you can always trim that down too. And cut it really close to one of those beads. And now you have your first completed bracelet. So here is our little tiny heart that's in here. And that's our topaz mix. And I like how the topaz mix kind of has some of those peaches and kind of rose golds to it too. So that really looks nice with that particular um, technique. So this was our first bracelet and we were using our crimp beads and we were learning how to put these closures on it. Um, and so now that you have these, of course, there's lots of options for closures. Some people don't like these because they're hard to kind of open and close. There are magnetic closures. There are also toggle ones that are like a little 
line goes through, um, a little bar goes through the circle in order to kind of close it off. So you can use those same techniques for all of those kinds of class and closures. All right, I saw some great questions, which lead me to my next path about stretch magic and about other kinds of jewelry. So you perfectly fell into my trap. <laughs> and I'm going to show you some cool jewelry that I've been making. So all of these are with beads that I got from Michael's. So I like to have little um, markets sometimes where I'll sell a lot of the different things that I'm creating and making. So all of these were made with stretch magic. So it's that same topaz mix, but this time it's on a stretchy cord rather than having those metal closures. So these are actually a lot faster to create than um, the ones I just showed you. So sometimes what I like to do, and like these blue ones are a good example, is I'll make one that has my professional closure on it. And then I might finish the stack with ones that are gonna be faster and easier for me to make so that I can have a kind of complete set. Um, you can add more charms. So these are charms you can find at Michael's that kind of have like these um, keeping away the evil eye kind of bracelets. And so I just, at some different points in my bracelet with my stretch magic, I would stop and add a charm. Um, there are some really beautiful charms too. If you like some sayings, this one says, all is well with my soul. And this is kind of that turquoise and topaz that I was suggesting for you to use today also. And you might notice these little pieces. So I also sometimes will go to estate sales and, and different uh, Goodwill and places and find old jewelry and take it apart and kind of reuse it. So this is from a different, I think this was actually an earring and I kind of took it apart and then re-strung it onto some stretch um, cord. And then I made another really lovely stack. These little things, um, they're like earring holders and bracelet holders and jewelry holders. We also sell these at Michael's. And so I think this really just elevates if you are gonna sell these at a market or something, it just makes it look really professional and makes it look really nice for people who are buying it. Now, one of my other little tricks, and I can't believe I'm telling you all my secrets, but you know, we're friends, so I'll tell you. <laughs> one of my other secrets is that when I have some of these at the market, I like to kind of write something on it. So like, I'll give the stack an intention. So maybe I kind of feel like this stack is going to bring someone clarity or bring someone good luck or something like that. And so I'll write a little message like this stack is to bring you good luck. And like, there's something about like seeing a stack with just the right word at just the right time that kind of really just pulls people in. And it's a really great gift for someone too. So if I say that this stack is for healing and you know somebody who's going through something, like you wanna buy that for somebody as a nice gift to kind of encourage them. So that's my other little secret to markets is to kind of have like a little marketing idea of these aren't just beautiful bracelets I made. They're also going to bring you health, healing, <laughs> and all kinds of other things I can't guarantee. But, you know, it's all about positive thinking. So now that I've shown you those and you're kind of enticed by those, I will tell you some of the secrets for beating faster. So beating faster especially when it comes to stretch magic. Um, here's the secret, this right here. This is called a bead spinner. And if you've never seen a bead spinner, I had not seen one until relatively recently and it changed my life. <laughs> so this bead spinner is pretty amazing. And I think Felicia already dropped in the chat, but I do wanna kind of point out again that we do have some great elastic cording. Um, stretch magic is one brand of stretch elastic, but Michael's has some really good, um, what do you call it? Economy packs where you can get a ton of it in one shot. And it's all really nice thin um, cording that's gonna fit these seed beads really well. You do have to be careful if you're getting a stretch magic and pay attention to how thick the stretch magic is. Because remember our seed beads are only a six and if you use a 12 or something like that, some of the stretch magic, your seed beads are not gonna fit over. So be careful with those. Um, the kind that I'm telling you about and the kind that I think um, Felicia has thrown in the chat, these are what they look like. They come in, there's four packs, I think for $10, which is a really great deal. 
and I have been making things off these four packs for probably a month or two and have not run out yet. So it's a really great value if you want to make a ton of, of stretch cords. So just to show you the struggle and then show you the solution, I'm going to go ahead and put some beads. Let me throw, I think I would also suggest it like a turquoise to you today. So let me pull that one out. Here we go. So just to show you, um, if you're trying to bead with stretch magic, um, it's not the same as beading with wire. It's much harder to kind of keep because this is gonna flop around a lot more. It's much harder. So this is where I start suggesting beading needles. So there are things called long, um, long eye, I think is what it's called, beading needles. And a long eye beading needle is basically like um, two pieces of wire put together. I'm trying to see if I have one handy. Oh, I do. So here's one kind of beading needle. Um, it's a curved, this one's a curved big eye beading needle, but there are also ones that are not curved. And why it's called a big eye is because this is really just two pieces of wire right next to each other. And if I can get them apart, to pull it closer to my eyes. There we go. So this whole thing is the eye of a needle. And so it's basically two pieces of wire, but then there's an ending that's connected and there's a top that's connected. And so all you do is you put your stretch magic or your elastic cording, your stretch cording through the big eye and kind of pull it down. And then this is much easier. This is more like what we were just doing with the wire of stringing it through this curved bead or this curved needle. And because the big eye is holding on to that elastic piece at the bottom, I can just pull these down over that and get those onto my elastic cording very, very quickly. Now, if you think that's fast, just you wait. <laughs> this is turning into an infomercial because I can't help myself. I love the speed spinner so much. Um, no one is paying me to say that. I just do. I love it. I make so many things. So the bead spinner comes with this curved bead or uh, curved needle. And here's what's happening. I'm going to spin this around. And you see how the beads kind of go up towards the side of my spinner. And then the reason why this needle is, is curved is because I put it in here. And look at that. I mean, <laughs> I see some shocked faces because yes, that is the right answer. So I was able to string all of these without really even trying. Like how much faster is that? Honestly, it's amazing. I know. So I'm just going to put this in here. And once the beads are up at the side, I just place my needle in the right place. Yes, correct. This is magic. You are right. And then I just pull them down and look, they're already on the stretch cord. So easy, so fast. I'm almost done with the bracelet. I mean, that's crazy compared to how long the first one took us, right? So once I found the speed spinner, I'm telling you, it was a game changer. And that's how I made all of those bracelets I just showed you. Um, and I was able to just make them so quickly while I'm just sitting there watching the Olympics because I love the Olympics. <laughs> and now it's the Paralympics, so it's time to make even more. But I do believe that in the Michael store, I think either Beadalon, I think Beadalon has a bead spinner that you might be able to actually pick up in the store. But there are also some options for online bead spinners that you can order through Michael's website. So any of those are probably gonna make it so much faster for you. And just at some point I need to check and see if that's big enough. I think bead spinners, depending on what brand and how nice of a bead spinner and how many things it comes with, can put you anywhere from $15 to like, $30, $40 worth it, a thousand percent worth it every single time. I'm just going to add a couple more beads to this and then I'm going to show you the next super important step, which is how to close your elastic stretch bracelets. Sometimes my beads do jump out of my bead spinner. So when I'm doing this by my couch, 
Um, yes, I do have a lot of beads in my couch, but also <laughs> I try to keep it in like um, a plastic tray so that if they pop out of the bead spinner, they're at least in the tray so that they stay out of my couch as much as possible. But, you know, things happen. All right. I do believe I'm at the end of this and I have enough beads in order to make a nice size for my wrist. Let me check. Yep. Looks good to me. Um, I can make it a little smaller. I could take off a couple beads, but you compare it to your wrist and see what works for you. Now here is the knotting situation. So if you've ever tried to do these knots and you were not successful, chances are your cording is probably too thick for the knots that you're trying to do. So this thinner kind that I showed you that Michaels carries um, gives you much better knots and they're going to be a lot more secure because if this wire or if this like elastic is too thick, the knot it makes is too loose and then they easily come back off. So I'm just starting by making a square knot and you can decide how close you want your square knot to be to the beads. I'm kind of pulling the stretch away from my set of beads and I'm gonna finish off that square knot and pull it. So that's just one square knot. And you can pull on all four of these pieces of elastic at the same time to kind of tighten that knot. And then I'm gonna do it again. And I'm probably gonna do it one last time for good measure. Now, I'm gonna trim these down and usually the elastic is small enough and the knot is small enough to be able to just hide. Oh, Jan, those are beautiful. To hide into the rest of the beads. So I'm gonna take a little pair of scissors and I'm going to cut these down. And then it does just hide really nicely. You can put a bead over top of that knot and you can't even see the knot. Now I do go back and there is some different types of glue. I'm looking around my table to see if I put any by me. I don't think I did, but there um, are different jewelry glues too that you can just put a little bit of glue over top of this just as a second reinforcement of your um, knot. But this is going to last you for a while. You might need to restring it at some point if somebody wears it every single day. Um, the elastic might start to get a little bit of wear and tear but it's easy for you to just, before it actually busts, but if you feel like your elastic's starting to break, you can just put another piece of elastic and just string it through with a needle real quick before it even breaks. Um, if it does break, then you can always bust it up and make a different kind of bracelet. So those are all good. Someone's asking, do crimp beads work on stretch cords? Yes, but I don't know why you would want to do that, but yes. Um, I don't think they'll work as well because when the metal touches the elastic, it's definitely going to kind of bust up the elastic a bit, just like how I was worried about twisting my wires. So I don't think it's going to be that helpful for you to use crimp beads on your stretch cords, but um, you can without a doubt. So another set um, of charms. So in the jewelry aisles at Michael's, there's so many different kinds of charms. So you can get different um, metals of charms and just find some different packs and play around with it. Another good way to start jewelry making are these great bead kits. So this is a kit you can find bead landing from Michaels and it has lots of different sizes of seed beads and it has lots of varieties of colors. This is a really nice kind of champagne-y kind of color like the topaz mix we were working with, but they also have these sets that are in rainbow colors that are in, you know, bright colors and different things like that. So this is a great way to start building up your collection. And then what's nice about these two is that you can start kind of in your beading, you can just, you know, mix and match a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this a little bit of that. And then the bead spinner can kind of mix that up for you and make your own kind of creations of different colors and things like that. So that's a lot of how I end up doing my own color work is I don't purposely, I do not take the time to do all this pattern. That's not a pattern. This is just random greens that I throw into a bead spinner 
and collect up in order to make these beautiful bracelets. All right, so I'm wondering if there's some questions. We still have some time, and if you want me to show you some more things, if you want me to show you more of the closures, let me know in the chat what kind of things you're interested in seeing or talking about for the last little bit of class. And I did see a couple of people have some projects that they shared. So thanks for sharing those. If you end up putting them on Instagram, make sure you tag us at Learn With Michaels because we want to see your bracelets. We want to see what you're doing. All right, let's try the closures again. I think that's a good idea for us to end. All right, so I'm back to my wire. Interested in the jewelry glue. Yeah. Um, uh, Felicia, I know it's, I think it's called like HP cement, something like that. If you don't mind helping me try and find that. It is the GS hypo. Cement. Yes. Wrong letters. <laughs> yes. Thank you. So say it one more time. It is the GS hypo cement. Perfect. Glue. Thank you. Yeah, and that's perfect for the elastic and for the stretch, for sure. So seed bead earrings, absolutely. You can use a lot of these same techniques. Um, that's a whole different thing for a whole different day, though. So let me just get a little bit more of my wire. And we're going to do the crimping and the closures one more time so that you can see that for yourself. So I'm pulling out some wire that is longer than my wrist. And I'm sure I could have done a better job of keeping track of this, but I did not. So probably about three inches longer than what my actual wrist is. And I'm gonna go ahead and snip that off with my wire cutters. Perfect. I think this time, um, because I did it before, I'm gonna show you with the jump rings because you have your jump rings in your little pack that you might've gotten for this class too. And I don't think we've used any of those yet. So I am gonna take a lobster closure, but instead of using this flat piece, I'm gonna attach it to a jump ring. And I'm gonna talk to you about how we do the different sizing using those jump rings. And here are a bunch of different jump rings. So someone asked if a crimp gets messed up in the process, um, how do you fix it? A couple different ways you can use, um, since usually the crimping part happens at the end of the wire, you can always cut it off and start again. And you probably have enough extra wire that that's not gonna be a problem. Um, or sometimes you can slide them off because they probably weren't that great to begin with. You probably didn't actually grab the wire with them. So you can probably slide them off the end and try it again. Does the spinner work with wire is a great question that we will try to answer in just a minute because I have never tried. <laughs> so we will all find out together. I am first putting a crimp bead on and then I am putting the closure on and I'm gonna fold over the wire over the closure so that it doubles back through the crimp bead. I'm gonna try and keep those wires from being twisted at all. So I'm gonna straighten them out and make sure that I keep them lined up next to each other rather than over top of each other. Sorry, getting a little out of focus. And then I'm about to take my crimping tool and I'm gonna do three steps. I'm going to kind of round the bead using the front of the crimp tool. And then after I have rounded that bead, I'm going to go back in with my chomper and kind of break that into the two different tubing sections. And then I am going to go back to the first set and I'm going to bite down on that with the first set. And that's going to push those two little tubes together. All right. I think what's going to happen when I try this, <laughs> I mean, I don't know, but I think what's going to happen is I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work. Remember that the needles I was using um, 
for this are curved. So you might even wanna try and curve a little bit with your wire. We're about to see. It might not be thick enough. Hmm. I bet if this wire was a little bit sturdier, it would do it, but I don't think we're gonna be able to do it with this particular wire because it's a little too floppy. Yep. But we sure did try it. Oh, there's one. I got one of them. <laughs> so yeah, I bet if you tried with a thicker wire, you'd be able to do it. Jan, that's cool. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and bead some then. Old school. You're gonna get spoiled once you get a bead spinner. You're like, why am I wasting my life stringing all these beads, you know? But it's not a waste. Okay. Um, so someone asked, is wire a hundred percent wire or is there something coated inside? Great question. And it truly depends on what you picked up at the store. So let me take a moment and show you a couple of different options. So something like this, yep, 100% wire, I would say. But then when it comes to some of these beetalons, um, they tell you how many different strands. So there's different thicknesses. So this one only has seven strands and you can kind of see those seven tiny little strands are kind of braided together to make that thicker wire. Whereas this one's made up of 49 strands, which is of course gonna be a much stronger wire. Um, that's gonna be harder to break, harder to bend, harder to bust off of your wrist. So yes, um, some wire is just straight up wire and some wire is meant for jewelry and has all these different strands so that it kind of gives that extra um, bendable um, element to it. And also that it's nice and strong and it's not going to break very easily. So another question was when crimping, can we add bracelets together? So what I wanna show you on this last one before we go is I'm gonna add a jump ring and that's gonna kind of go back to your question, Jasmine, because um, if you make several different bracelets and then you attach them at the end of them instead of having a closure if you attach them to a jump ring then you can attach all those jump rings together to another jump ring this one and then that's how you can start stacking your bracelets into these bigger piles um so then you can just you don't have to put every single one of these bracelets on you just have that one final closure and you have all of these bracelets on at the same time so what's different about this than the first one we did was that instead of ending with a clasp, we're ending with a jump ring. And then those jump rings can be connected together in order to do some of that other stuff together. So let me just pretend like we're done here and I'm gonna add a jump ring to finish this one off instead of a closure. So I'm putting a crimp bead on and then I'm picking a jump ring and it can be different sizes of jump rings depending on what it is that you're trying to do. If you're trying to give someone somewhere to put a clasp through, probably a bigger jump ring is gonna be better because it's already hard enough for people to kind of put things through the clasp that you just definitely wanna go ahead and give them a better shot of being able to grab that with a little clasp. So I'm pulling this crimp bead closer to my clasp or closer to my jump ring in this case. And I am keeping the wires from being twisted over top of each other making sure that they're straight. And you can give a little wiggle room. It doesn't have to be right up against the jump ring. Little wiggle room is fine. And then I'm gonna do my three steps. I'm going to flatten it or round it out. Then I'm going to bite it down so that it breaks it into the two different sections of wire. And then I'm gonna go back to the first piece and I'm gonna fold those two pieces towards each other. Pull it towards me so I can see with my eyes. There we go. So now I have a jump ring connected and that jump ring can be the thing that ends the bracelet. And then, like I said before, you can end lots of bracelets with smaller jump rings. And if each one has a smaller jump ring, then maybe all of those small jump rings kind of go together to this one jump ring at the end in order to give you a whole stack of bracelets using one closure. So there's another question about the bead spinner working with larger beads. So 
Um, yes, it works with smaller beads and it works with larger beads. So here's a little um, hot tip for you. Again, I'm just full of secrets today. Um, people who are making like Taylor Swift bracelets with like those little clay beads, if you know what I'm talking about, this please, because this is going to go so much faster. So it is um, possible to use clay beads. It's just depending on you need a stronger needle if you're using bigger and thicker beads to pick them up. So something that's super bendy, it's going to be need to be a lot sturdier in order to get those bigger clay beads. But it is definitely possible and it will help you make all of your bracelets so much faster. So I think that is all the information, believe it or not, that I have for you in this beginner's course. So Felicia, are there other questions that you think I might have missed? Okay. Well, let me just say a goodbye then. So I am so glad that you came to um, play jewelry with me today. I had a really good day. I made a lot of cool things and I can't wait to see what kind of things you make too. So come back, have another craft class with us. Watch all of our jewelry making classes on YouTube and I will see you again very soon. Bye everybody.